boy steps outside of his home. It's a small place that houses him, his mother, three siblings. It's dark on the outside, but he can hear shouting, a noise like a rallying chant directed towards the city's dominating football team. Only this call sounds angry and tired, frustrated and so much like a cry for condemnation rather than support. There are people running in all directions, some stopping to douse their eyes with milk, complaining hotly about the stinging that blurs their vision and ravages their senses. The neighborhood businesses have either boarded up for the night, or had their windows smashed, their products looted, and their hard work and livelihoods destroyed in a matter of hours. The police forces here are armed to the teeth, ready to take near lethal force against the citizens of this district. Their trigger fingers are antsy, they're holding their guns as if they've been waiting for this moment their entire careers. The chance to be armed, to be dangerous, to be feared. Darius knows the boy. Darius knows that he, like his neighbors, are coming to a knife fight carrying only sticks, a gunfight carrying only skittles. Armed simply with a jacket, some beat up sneaks, a bandana that covers his nose and mouth, and a camera phone, he walks out into the confusing fray against his mother's hopeless pleading. He's resolved to become a child soldier that day to fight for those who can no longer fight for themselves. Darius clicks the button on his phone and the red light blinks and the clock counts up by seconds as he walks towards the blaring lights and the loud pops of gunfire. Zero, one, two. The thin bandana doesn't do much to alleviate the sting of tear gas, but he resolves to stand firm and with his allies to stand for something. Darius remembers the photos, he remembers the reports. Maybe it was the chemicals dissipating in the cold, stagnant air, but he swore he could smell a corpse, rotting for what seemed like hours in the sun that no longer shines here in the town turned police state. Maybe the body was left in the street because maybe, just maybe, it was meant to serve as an example. Darius wonders as he bump shoulders with another peaceful protester. Why must kids serve as martyrs for a cause they really didn't sign up for? Bodies splayed on the street as their blood soaks into the labyrinthine cracks of concrete. Why did they become contestants for a game show that plays like Russian roulette, only there is no thrill or rush of adrenaline when that gun clicks and no bullet is dislodged from it because the game, it's perpetual. And it goes on and on, even after the last person is left standing. And so as Darius faces the cold, hard, shielded faces of those in front of him, now and forever, may the odds be ever in his favor. Monday, November 24th, 9.01 p.m. He says, they let him go. My brother is my brother Derry Smith, well, he's a boy of few words. He speaks as though his mind runs on Twitter servers, 140 characters or less. This text consisting of 12 letters, 13 characters, and four simple words hits me like a blank. Within this message lies entire novels of sadness, despair, anger, like an epic that never ever ends as it keeps repeating the same old tired stories over and over again with the same tragic hero heroes. But this text is the most I've ever heard him speak at once. When I think about, oh, I didn't really know what to convey at that moment. I didn't really know how to say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry the world doesn't see Michael Brown and Eric Garner, Tamir Rice and Darian Hunt, or you, like they see Ruin Sinna, Mags and Thresh, 
as just people who never deserve the hands dealt them, victims of a system stacked against them from infancy. So I just said, I know, be safe. When I see young boys like Michael Brown, I see my brother. I see the boy who runs track and plays football, who's dreamed of playing for Oregon. The boy who eats his cheeseburgers with nothing on them and collects Japanese comic books about pirates on the quest for treasure. And then when I go on Tumblr, I, I turn on the news. And I see the same pictures, the same tweets, the same opinions that try to validate or invalidate the existence of black people. I see my little brother with the whole world at his feet being reduced to a hashtag. His whole life minimized to a one minute segment on a biased news station. One poorly thought out picture at his first college party, 140 characters. Another black boy who joins the hundreds that are being victimized by a system that in theory was meant to protect them, but doesn't. Hunger Games Catching Fire grossed over 864.9 million worldwide. If that money were sympathy, if it were caring and compassion, how much money would my brother Darius' story gross? Hashtag Black Lives Matter.